Hello and welcome back to our Bandit Lord playthrough and thank you very much to those of you that gave me some suggestions as to how I could improve the whole My Little Warband situation. Also I have no idea why the mod creator deleted his account on Nexus. I can only assume maybe there was some hacking going on or something like that. I really have no idea otherwise. Hopefully um, they have not completely left the modding scene because My Little Warband is one of the best mods and it would be fantastic to, you know, keep it around as long as we possibly can have it. Anyway, I have been doing the arena. As you can no doubt tell, I have 500 gold, so I've won twice so far. And I thought we might go in there together because I found a pretty decent way of winning quite consistently. And there's not actually any way that... Um, well, there, there are no exploits or glitches or anything. It's basically just a case of, in my opinion at least, picking the right town, picking the right culture to participate in these, in these battles. Anyway, I wanted to start here because I've leveled up twice in my efforts, you know, fighting in the arena and things. And I wanted you to see the the perks that we're going to be selecting. Also, uh, thank you to those of you that gave me some extra ideas about what kind of mods I could use for this series. In this episode, I haven't added any mods at all, but I'm thinking I might add the, um, what is it called again? Formery? Is it called Formery or something like that? I'm actually not entirely sure what it's called now, but there is a mod that basically uh, adds a whole bunch of bandit units and you have the ability to call bandits to your side and you can have hideouts and all that wonderful stuff. And generally, I actually looked at that. I actually looked at that before I even started this series, but I thought to myself, well, is this going to make things possibly too complicated or too easy or too whatever you know what i mean so i kind of just left it out for the moment but apparently a lot of you say it's really good so why not okay so i'm gonna add that before the next episode and then you can well i, I suppose we can both look forward to that anyway slightly increases your persuasion chance i think i will probably be taking that Yes, increasing my party size by 5 is always good as well. Increase your damage by 4% with all melee weapons. Mm, when no shields and ranged weapons are wielded, you gain 5% movement speed. No, I think 4% 4% damage is probably going to be better. Also, I've changed my troop tree around as well, by the way, because um, a lot of you said that maybe it would be a little too harsh, a little too hardcore to wait until Veterans Respect, because obviously Veterans Respect is literally a 150 skill, and you're going to need that to be able to convert bandits into regular troops. So I appreciate your input on that, to be honest, because I was thinking to myself, well, I mean, it's doable, you know, it, it is doable, and I am going to still attempt to get Veterans Respect as fast as possible, because obviously, in the case of us recruiting prisoners and things like that, in the form of bandits, of course, we are then going to have the ability to um, recruit and indeed upgrade them and all that wonderful stuff. At least I hope so. Anyway, uh, we're going to go for arrow catcher with one handed here. And we're also going to go for infantry in your party. Again, an additional 10% of the total experience earned after battles. In my opinion, that's a lot better than the other one. And we are going to probably be placing some more points in Charm. I would say Charm is probably going to be pretty useful. We're going to go for some more Athletics. I'm going to put two points in Endurance as well. I felt like my Endurance just hasn't been up to scratch, so to speak. So I really did need to get a little bit more in that. Okay, so as you can no doubt tell, we've been doing the Arena. So let me go in here and uh, let me see whether I can actually do something. I mean, I'm actually, it's kind of weird, really. I mean, maybe it's not that weird, but generally I'm much better in combat when I'm not commentating. I mean, obviously, right? Yeah, so I should probably just shut my mouth whenever I'm having some problems um, winning a fight or anything like that. But, you know, generally... That is how it is, of course, you know, sometimes you can't concentrate or one cannot concentrate on something specific when doing something else, for example, commentating or whatever. Okay, oh, that was a nice hit right there. Look at that, 87 damage. This guy's going to get killed by that guy. Oh, no, no, never mind, never mind. Usually they do that. They've done that quite often where one of them has come along and basically just scavenge killed the other guy 
And uh, I'm not a big fan of that, to be honest. Not a big fan of that, because obviously if I do all the damage to one of them, I would very much like to pick up the kill myself. I actually don't know whether that really makes any difference to the reward, which I don't think it does. But it's still kind of frustrating when you do all the damage, like 90% of the damage or something like that, to one particular guy, and then all of a sudden someone else comes out of nowhere and is like, Oh yes, I will steal your kill, sir. And then I, you know, see fit to approach him with a gauntlet and slap him across the face with it and say, I demand a duel. Or I'll just, you know, raid his house in the night. I'll just steal his apples or whatever, because that's what bandits do, right? They steal apples. I mean, that's what they do in this game. <laughs> I mean, obviously, they go up to these caravans and they're like, ah, give us your apples. Give us your apples, you know, and, and that's it. And then the caravans go, oh, please, please, sir, take my apples. And uh, how many times do you think I can say apples in the span of one minute? I don't know, probably 15 times or whatever it's been now. But yeah, there you go. Anyway, I, I'm actually just talking complete nonsense and I am wrecking face. Have you noticed? I, I, I can't believe it. What, what, what's actually going on here? Anyway, I have no ranged weapon. Now, generally, what I've found is that if you literally just go around and pick up a couple of javelins and things like that, you're going to have... Oh, whoops. I did not mean to do that. <laughs> uh, you're going to have a much easier time. At least I think you're going to have a much easier time because you're going to have the ability to then um, kill people from far away and it's just a lot easier. So, you know, you're not going to have too many... Well, he says you're not going to have too many difficulties as he almost gets himself murdered trying to show the exact point he was trying to make. Yes, what a classic. Okay, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna stay away from that guy with the two-handed. Gonna get behind him, do a little bit of damage. That's generally what you can also do. But you know what's really, really funny? I have won the last two rounds of the arena with headshot thrown weapon kills. Yeah. Really weird, right? Yeah, because usually you're not gonna see me get that that often. And there's a reason for that, of course. Yeah, there's a reason for that, because generally, whenever ugh, whenever someone's watching, you never want it. You, you, it never goes the way you want it to go, basically. That's, that's what I'm trying to say. Anyway, we've leveled up once again, so let's see what we can get here. Troops in your battle gain 5% more experience. Uh, yeah, troops in your party, that is. Okay, we're going to do that, and we'll probably increase... Oh yeah, pole arms. Pole arms, yes, we, we should definitely increase pole arms. Let's get some more control skill as well. And there is actually a task going on here. Ah, I need to pay a bribe to get in there. What's actually going on with these guys? You can't see their um, their portraits for some reason. I'm not entirely sure what's going on with them, but yeah. Um, I found, by the way, where our companion is. So we're going to go over there. I am really, really low on, on troops. Um, but you know what I'm going to do? I'm not going to recruit any elite troops at the moment because it just bankrupts me way too fast. And there are a wide variety of different villages around here that actually do provide noble units. So I'm going to mark those as best I can. We're going to just buy some grain here because I actually need a little bit of a um, little bit of food. And yeah, so I'm going to mark them, the ones where I can actually go to get noble units from. And then we're going to uh, try our best to return there uh, later down the line and recruit those noble units. And apparently, thanks to thanks to um, that one person that um, mentioned it, noble units start at tier two. I had no idea. I, I I am apparently an imbecile who has no idea about this game, even though I've played hundreds and hundreds of hours. But yes, uh, apparently they start at tier two, so that's actually really good to know. So I don't need to. Oh, Bruce has lost his daring trait. Oh, well, that's nice, isn't it? That's fantastic. Thank you so much. Okay, well, whatever the case, these are the new bear looters as well, by the way. Yes, I basically have gone into the troop tree here, and I just copied the template of these spark units. I don't particularly like... Th I, I, I don't know. I don't particularly like them, because I personally would prefer to have thugs, for example, or looters, but I've done that, and they don't level up. Uh, I mean, I could try thugs, actually, because I don't know. Wait, wait a minute. Let me let me actually just see, because I think the game does not update unless you, you know, uh, let, it, let it move. Yeah, look, there we go. Okay, so as you can see, 
thugs actually do level up. So that's really nice. It's just looters, the specific looter unit that requires veterans respect by the looks of things. So next time we go into a fight, I should be okay to continue leveling these guys up and then we'll see um, we'll see what happens with them. But yeah, we were able to get our companion back, which is really nice. I have 500 gold. Do you think I can win a tournament? I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. Do you think I can win a tournament? Shall I try? I think I should probably try because at the moment I'm thinking to myself, okay, this is kind of a do or die situation. I mean, I don't really want to do more arena. I would very much like to get 2,000 gold for winning this. So here we go. I am betting every single thing I have. And we are up against a lot of relatively difficult units. Bear in mind, I actually have a decent one-handed skill. Oh, no. Yes. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay. Oh, 73 damage? I actually did 73 damage? Whoa, okay. Uh, I was not expecting to deal that much damage, actually. I thought to myself, oh, you know what? It, it, all of my attacks are just going to glance off these guys' armor, you know? Because they have really good armor. I don't know whether you can notice that. But they have very good armor. And I'm literally running around in what looks like a bathrobe. So, yes. It's, uh, it's one of those things where you think to yourself, oh, yes. I am the most powerful warrior from the bathroom and I will be cozy and warm for as long as I wear this. Oh no, nice, that was a good, mm, that was a pretty good slash, nice indeed. Okay, there we go. Anyway, let's move on. Okay, so obviously I don't really have much more to bet. So we're gonna just be gaining 2,189 at the end of this. If I can achieve victory, I am going to have to be very careful, however. Okay, I'm gonna help you out, sir. No, 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 don't get killed, sir. What are you doing? No, no. Yes, I'm helping, I'm helping, I'm helping. Nice. Okay, I killed I killed my fair share and you died. Ah, oh, you absolute imbecile. I have no idea how, why, he, uh, why he did that. Now, is it a one? Oh, no. Oh, dear. Okay, this is really, really bad. Okay, actually, wait a minute. It's not, not as bad as I thought. No, it's not as bad as I thought. You, did you see what happened here? Did you see what happened? They completely just sabotage themselves. They absolutely sabotage themselves because one of them held back to throw weapons at me. And that was obviously a huge error because if they had literally just come at me at the same time, it would have been a done deal. I would have been dead. There would have been nothing for me to do. And the same thing here. Yep. The exact same thing happened. One of them held back to try and throw weapons, and the other one literally just charged in, and that was that was all she wrote. Oh, okay. This is this is somewhat problematic. I have no shield. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. This guy hasn't got a shield either. Oh yes. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Uh, I knew, I knew. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Ah, the strategy. The strategy of utilizing the AI and its uh, slight dumbness some of the time to uh, achieve victory. But there you go. We gained uh, so a little bit of influence, which I don't even know what that's really going to do for us. But we did get a Veterans Warrior Axe, which could be really useful for us, actually. And we gained 4,689 gold, which is super, super good. So now, what, what do you want to do? Well, that's the thing. I actually have no idea. What can we do? I mean, we can do a, a wide variety of different things now. So we can go to these places and we can, uh, we can get these noble units, you know? We can get these noble units now and we can see what we can do. So let's go here. Going to recruit some of them. I mean, bear in mind, they are 400 gold still. So we still need to be a little bit cautious about how we spend our money because they're still going to be uh, pretty harsh. Okay, so someone said that the training training troops quest is really easy. So I'm going to trust you, okay? I'm going to trust you, and we are going to do this. So let's see how we do. Bear in mind that it is me, and generally any single time I take this task, 
uh, bad things happen to them. <laughs> that, that's the that's the only way I can kind of say it. Yes, indeed. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm actually going to just upgrade these guys. Bear Elite. What was it? Bear Elite. Uh, what do they upgrade from again? Bear Elite Thug. Ugh. Okay. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of that name, actually. I'd like to have something a little bit better. So what about Bear... Uh, Bear Elite Thief? Ugh, yeah, that's oh, that's so unimaginative. Oh, how annoying. Okay, well, whatever the case, if you have any suggestions for names, by the way, then by all means, l let me know, um, because I'm, you know, terrible at, uh, at naming stuff. Okay, so let's actually just take a quick look. Should we copy one of these? Uh, there's so many different, um, different places and different things to copy here. I'm looking for a tier three. I'm looking for a tier three and someone that's got some pretty decent stats. Nothing too amazing, but you know, decent stats. So maybe something like the Vlandian Galant. Obviously, that's that's a that's a very strong cavalry unit. Is it too strong? Maybe. Is it too strong? I, I don't know actually. I'm gonna change the culture to Sturgeon. And we're going to have a look-see here. Okay, so wait a minute. So the Bear Elite Thug goes from having 40, 55 in these, in these skills and then goes to having 100 into pole arms. Uh, is, is that good? I, I don't know. I think that's actually kind of powerful. Maybe it's too powerful. Is it? Is it too powerful? Maybe. Bear Elite Raider... There we go, and we're going to copy probably something like, hmm, what should we go for? Uh, I'm thinking, I'm thinking probably one of the, um, one of the bandit, bandit riders. I mean, if there is actually a bandit rider that is a tier four, because wait a minute, isn't this a tier four? Yeah, this is a tier four unit. Bear in mind, we cannot have um, tier fives, so... We have to make the most of this. Can I even make it work? Ah, the oh the oh the, this guy this guy's looking pretty good. This guy's looking pretty good. Yeah, the Kuzate. I mean, it's a Kuzate. I, I'm not. Uh, oh, we could go for a Marauder actually. The tier three should be a Marauder, shouldn't it? Yeah, I think that actually makes more sense. So the tier three should be a Marauder, and then we should take a look at the tier fours. Ah, a Raider. That makes sense, doesn't it? I think that makes more sense, but I, I just don't really like the, um, I don't like the stats that they have. The stats are just way too low, in my opinion, for a noble unit. It just makes no sense for it to be so expensive, and then for us to have uh, pretty much no payoff. At least that's what it seems like to me at, at the moment. Because if you take a look at the Galant, which is a tier 3 unit, it has the same stat line. So, I mean... Well, technically, the Vlandian Knight actually has the same stat line as well. So I, I guess uh, <laughs> I guess there's also that. But yeah, okay, okay. So we're going to do the Kuzate for the Tier 4. Or should I just go for the Raider? No, I think the Raider should be Tier 3. Because this, again, is a noble unit. So I think it makes sense, right? Yeah, I think it makes sense. So we're going to go for the Marauder for the tier three, and then it's gonna go into one of these. I think this might be too powerful. Let me let me know if you think this is way too powerful, because I mean, to be fair, they do have 150 in bows, and generally, if we ever get an entire army full of these guys, I think we're probably gonna be okay. Like, I, I really think that we're possibly not gonna have any issues whatsoever. Anyway, this guy's gonna be a marauder if we can actually uh, find that at the uh, the template copy place. Ah, there we go. There we are. Okay, yeah. So, basically, my whole thing here, what I'm attempting to do is I'm trying to make it very difficult for my units to level up and to get to this point. But once they get to this point, then they get a significant power spike. But the problem is, getting to that point is going to be difficult Nevertheless, so that that's my whole um, that's the whole thing because if you take a look at the bear elite thug at the moment It has absolutely terrible stats. It really does and then it gets a little bit better 
in the form of the Bear Elite Thief. You can see that. It gets a little bit better. I mean, it's a pretty significant increase, but it's still not that good. And then it finally graduates into the Bear Elite Raider. And in my opinion, I think that's a pretty nice progression, but let me know what you think about that, because if you think that it's a little bit too strong or anything, then I'll, uh, I'll see what I can do and I'll try to change it and make it better. Anyway, let's take a look. It increases your speed damage bonus while on foot. Eh, I don't know whether I really care about that, I guess. Mm, I guess so. Anyway, let's go in. You know what? I don't want to go in here. Not with the Sturgeon Vassal. Ugh, how annoying. Yeah, that happens, doesn't it? I really need to um, install that mod again where it increases the looter stacks as well, by the way. I do need to increase that because I had that in my previous series. And generally, I liked it a lot. Uh, but I was thinking, well, if I'm going to be on the side of the looters, I don't really want them to be super strong. So that's the reason why I kind of decided to remove it. But, ooh, this is another one of those wonderful examples of the new Battle Terrain update where the battle map actually takes a significant portion of the world map and transports it into the fight, which I got to say, I think looks really amazing. I mean, just look at this. Look at the, the water effects. Look at the bridge and everything. It's, oh, it's, it's looking really nice, Everyone actually. Talk! Anyway, we're going to tell everyone to charge in. I'm basically just going to throw some... Throw some thrown weapons poorly, as you might expect. That's what I do. Uh, I mean, obviously, I'd like to level up my writing skill a little bit. So even if I can hit one person, oh, <laughs> like that, for example, then I'm going to be pretty happy with it. And there we go. Okay. And bear in mind, obviously, these are just looters. So it's going to be super easy for us. But um, yeah, I I'm actually going to look forward to installing that, that new mod. Um, and as far as I'm aware, it has no dependencies whatsoever, so you don't even need Harmony or anything for it, which is actually kind of amazing. I think it doesn't need Harmony, at least. If it does, then, well, I guess that's not that big a deal, but still, I, uh, I th I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. All right, so there you go. We were able to achieve victory there relatively simply and um, kind of kind of weird, right? Kind of weird how we, how we were able to do that super, super easily in comparison to before where we had um, big, big problems. And uh, have, have I shown you the difficulty settings? No, I haven't shown you the difficulty settings. Well, uh, they're basically the same as I always do when it comes to starting the game. And then I uh, change the damage that is done to me over the course of the series. In other words, this is what I currently have right here. So you can see here, this is what I always go for at the very start, unless stated otherwise. So if I say... I'm taking full damage, then I'm taking full damage. Should, do, you, do you think I should increase this? Because here's the thing, if I do this, I'm going to die almost instantaneously every single time. Uh, that's the only reason why I decided not to have that, because, I mean, you could tell from the, from the first episode, I think you could kind of see everything was kind of difficult anyway, so, I mean... Let me know what you think about that as well. If you think that I should change that, then by all means, you know, I'm, I'm happy to give it a go and we'll see if it's enjoyable or not but anyway we have leveled up our throne weapons when you're holding a throne weapon you gain wow you actually take 10 percent less damage from ranged attacks or you have plus one ammunition for throwing weapons hmm uh i'm thinking plus one ammunition and then riding skill increase carry capacity mounted infantry increase your party speed yeah we're gonna go for party speed thank you very much and let's go in here oh there's a tier three that's going to be super expensive. Yeah, look at that. 464 gold for three units. That's uh, that's pretty harsh, isn't it? Yes, that is indeed pretty harsh. Okay, so let's get those guys. And uh, yeah, I, I guess what we should do is um, try to fight some more. Try to fight some more people. And try to level up our borrowed troops. Because we do have the borrowed troops um, leveling up, I uh, can't level the looters up. So generally what I'm going to do with looters, I'm going to keep Sea Raiders because Sea Raiders become Sea Raider Warriors and then Sea Raider Chiefs. And then I'm just going to leave them at the Sea Raider Chief level and that's it. I'm not going to level them any further. But um, yeah, obviously the other, the other looters, they go into Imperials and it basically makes no sense for me to level those because we are not going to use any other faction's units. 
So that makes sense, right? Okay, so we're gonna put um, a Kadria in here. And does she have any stats to give? Yeah, she does, as you can see. Foot troops in your formation gain 5% movement speed. Um, actually, do I even want her to do this? Hmm. I guess. I mean, I I probably have better uh, better perks to provide to our infantry, but I'm thinking to myself, well, these are literally just looters. Don't think I really need to worry about that just yet. And bear in mind that she is obviously still needing to level up a whole bunch of perks and, um, you know, get to a point where we are going to be happy with what she's doing. So, yeah, anyway, I'm just going to try and ride as fast as I possibly can. Just throw some... Throw some thrown weapons randomly, because as you can see, we're leveling up very, very fast right now. Because, again, um, whenever you're riding really, really fast, and you uh, shoot or throw something from horseback, and if it's a sufficiently difficult shot, in other words, if you're um, riding from side to side or anything like that, you're going to have a much easier time leveling up a particular skill, a ranged skill if you make the shot difficult. And if you are able to hit someone in a massive conglomeration of units, and I'm talking about, you know, if there's, I don't know, 20, 25 of them all, you know, sort of clustered together really, really nicely, then it's going to be super easy to, to hit them, especially even with low skill. And it makes a huge difference. It really does. Anyway, uh, yeah, we need... Yeah, we need... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is another barrier to entry as well, by the way. As you can no doubt tell, we are going to need war horses. We are going to need war horses to be able to level up our bear elite thieves. So this is actually not that big a deal. I actually think that's pretty good because that means that it increases our... Mm, it, as I say, it increases our requirements. It basically makes it just that much more difficult for our, uh, for me to, you know, get things for, uh, for our guys and, um, you know, uh, get them, get them leveled up as and as and when we want. Anyway, let's actually just take a quick look. Does she have writing skill? No, she does not have writing skill, but she does have throwing skill. We don't have any throwing weapons for her, but it seems like she would do quite well with throwing weapons. Okay, so we're just going to continue recruit. Actually, we're not going to continue recruiting because I am apparently maxed out. Yes, I'm apparently maxed out. Okay, I'm going to need to level up these borrowed troops. So I'm going to need to put them towards the top here. Uh, can I do an auto-resolved? Uh, hmm. Yeah, well, actually, I'm going to go in here and see if I can buy some war horses. There you go. There are some war horses right there. They are 600 gold. Okay, yeah, that's probably not going to happen anytime soon. But nevertheless, it's it's nice to know, I guess. Uh, it's nice to know that I could potentially um, get them. Uh, I mean, that's the thing. Basically, what I'm wanting right now is I'm wanting to save up money so that I can potentially purchase an enterprise or I can potentially get a caravan up and running. Something like that would be pretty advantageous for us. And uh, that's the point. Generally, in the first episode, we just didn't have enough money to be able to recruit as many units as possible. And obviously, now that my forces can level up, if I get one good battle, then most of the time, my guys are then going to level up, and then we're going to have a much easier time of things in general. So obviously, the hardcore nature of the series may be slightly diminished as a result of that, but mm, I don't know. I don't know, because we still are uh, dealing with lower ranking, lower tier units with, well, relatively, relatively terrible gear in, um, in many aspects. And as a result, it is still going to provide a pretty large challenge when we start fighting vassals, because obviously the fact that we really are now just fighting mountain bandits, we are literally just fighting bandits right now. It's obviously not going to provide it an extreme challenge or anything like that. Did we lose some people? No, we only lo oh, we only lost some bear thieves. That's not too bad. And did we get any of these guys leveled up? No, they did not level up. That's kind of weird. All right. Oh yeah, these guys. Uh, what should what should we level them up into? Probably bear raiders, right? I think bear raiders probably a good idea. So let's do that. 
because we do want them to be as good as possible when it comes to defenses. We want them to have really, really good defenses. Okay, so otherwise, apart from that, gonna take all this, gonna give her two javelins, because obviously she is a thrown weapon person. She has 90 in throwing, actually. And we have a lot of stuff, actually, that we just picked up, which is better for me and better for her. So we're going to be upgrading her, as you can see right there. She's looking nice. We just need to get her a cape of some kind uh, or some shoulder armor or something like that. And then uh, we're going to be uh, pretty good. Yeah, we're going to be pretty good. Okay, wait a minute. What's actually happening here? Why am I so slow? I'm disorganized. I have prisoners. Okay. Well, I guess that's perfectly fine. I mean, disorganization, I, I guess that does happen. Okay, so anyway, I'm going to move over here. I am kind of a little bit worried about the fact that these borrowed troops have not leveled up. It take Oh, wow, 56. Okay, it's literally 56 days it's going to... Um, it's going to be before he requests it, he requests them back. So it's going to take a long time. I'm going to actually just do an auto-resolve here, see if we can maybe level them up that way. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so one of them actually did level up a little bit, um, potentially a little bit faster. And we've got a cow now as well. Okay, let's go to Varchek. Because I do need to sell. And uh, is there a tournament going on there? I mean, that's the point. Any single time you can win a tournament, especially when you have the skill... Uh, what is it? Yeah, that. Duelist. You get double renown from tournaments. I, in my opinion, that's super, super useful. Increase your swing speed with pole arms. Yeah, probably going to go for that one. Uh, decreases accuracy penalty by 15% while you're mounted or increase your mount's top speed. But that also increases your party speed by 2%. I actually like that quite a bit. Going to go for charm skill as well. We're going to go for meaningful favors. In my opinion, meaningful favors is fantastic. 10% better chance for double persuasion success. That's just way too powerful, in my opinion, to pass up. Even though a 20% chance to avoid persuasion critical failure is good, it's just 10% better chance for double persuasion success, in my opinion at least, is better. Okay, so I'm going to level up my pole arms a little bit more, and we're probably going to go for maybe some more control. I think some more control would be quite nice. Because I'd like to level up my throne weapons quite quickly. Not that quickly, but quite quickly. And we're going to just select these looters and sell them off to the ransom broker. And we're going to try and persuade some of the sea raiders to join us if we can. Yes, it seems like we can. That's great. So let's get them. And it's going to cost me a little bit of morale, but that is to be expected. And we now have the ability to... Well, do nothing else, because I am maxed out. So this is obviously not going to really work. But we can sell some of our, our loot here. Yeah, everything's looking pretty nice. I should probably sell the cow, so I'm going to do that as well. I have five days worth of food. Ooh, this is pretty expensive, actually. Yeah, the, uh, the food here is pretty expensive, so I have to be a little bit careful about that. But, yeah, okay. Let's go and fight some more bandits while we have the ability to do so still. You never know. Alright, let's go for a nice little auto resolve and hopefully that's gonna... Yep, there we go. That leveled up the last unit. Fantastic. That means that I am now going to send the troops back as you can see. So let's send the troops back and now what? Okay, that's a very significant reward. That is an extremely significant reward. I was not expecting that. I thought to myself, okay, they're definitely going to give me, I don't know, 500, 600 gold or something like that. Because generally, I wouldn't say that that quest is difficult. I mean, thank you to uh, those of you that actually told me that it's a really, really simple task. I mean, generally, I've... I've just had bad experiences, okay? I've had bad experiences with that particular task and I've always tried to sort of steer clear of it as a result. Because whenever I see that task, I think to myself, oh, it's just going to be another one of those, you know, really difficult to do things and then it's just, ugh, really frustrating. So that's the reason why I generally tend to uh, steer clear of that. But now now it's actually not too bad. Oh, look at this guy. He actually needs help, uh, needs help with some brigands. Now, bear in mind, okay, here's the thing. 
This is the early game, but once we have installed the new mod, we're gonna start doing all kinds of bandit stuff. We're gonna start blackmailing. We're gonna start um, uh, scheming. We're gonna start constructing hideouts. We're gonna start raiding. We're gonna do all that wonderful stuff. So even though I'm doing tasks for people right now and helping them out in many, many different ways, that is obviously not going to stay the way that it is because obviously we're going to try and role play the best bandit that we possibly can. And so you don't have to worry. You don't have to worry about that at the moment, you know, because I, I just wanted to let you know about that because obviously we're not going to be like, um, uh, we're not really going to be the Robin Hood kind of character. We're not going to play the Robin Hood character this time because generally we have played that in the past. But yeah, we're not going to play that this time. And uh, yeah, Sea Raider Warrior. There we go. Sea Raider Warrior. Wait, that's what we're going to do. And there we go. Yeah, everyone else is fine. We don't have any war mounts, unfortunately. So I'm going to definitely need to get some of those. There we are. All right. And we have completed the task. And that's given us 569 gold. That's pretty good, actually. That's not bad. I was actually looking for a bandit hideout destruction mission. But obviously... I mean, maybe I should just try to do that as fast as possible. There's another training troops quest. I mean, generally, if you want to capitalize on that, then by all means, go ahead. Personally, for me, I don't really want to do that. Whoa, are you serious that they're literally giving us tier four units? What? How? Why? What? <laughs> okay. Uh, sure, I guess I'll... I'm... <laughs> I'm not adverse to having a couple of tier fours join us. Okay, that's kind of um, that's kind of amusing. I have no idea what, what's going on with that. Oh, deliver the herd. Okay, yeah, delivering the herd. It very much depends on what kind of herd you are having to deliver. But generally, you want to be a bit careful about those tasks because if you can take a herd that is mostly comprised of horses. And I'm talking about good horses here. I'm talking about, you know, like higher higher tier horses. Then you're going to have a really nice time. And you're going to be able to sell some of them as well. So if you go to a place that doesn't have many horses for sale, you can make a massive amount of money uh, before you actually complete the task. Which is really cool. But uh, on the other hand, if you get a task where, you know, you have to take some sheep somewhere or something you're probably not going to have the best time. Anyway, a caravan ambush is definitely what I'm looking to do right now. So let's have a look-see. I don't really care how much it's going to be. I mean, in terms of uh, what kind of reward they're, they're, they're willing to give us. But um, I'm just going to be recruiting some more of these bandits right here. And we're going to be uh, following Svana's caravan. This is going to be a little... Oh, there we go. Okay, I was, I was going to say, this is going to be a little bit difficult to follow her because it was nighttime. But now, thankfully... We can see. And who is she going to be attacked by? She's being attacked right now. Oh, Sea Raiders. Oh, okay. Hello there. Yes, I will help you out. Okay, here we go. Now, this is obviously going to be pretty nice because we basically... Missing formations? Yeah, I mean, I have... Wait a minute. Formation is currently empty. Well, now it's not. Thank you. <laughs> now it's not. Okay, yeah, so... We're basically just going to leave that the way it is, in my opinion, and then we'll just, you know, just go on and we'll see what we can do. Okay, so I have literal two archers. Yes, a literal two archers. Okay, let's just tell the uh, horse archers and the cavalry to charge in. Tell these guys to go out the front. Shield wall. Ow. Yeah, I should probably, you know what, I should probably use some, uh, use some throne weapons here. This might be a good opportunity to gain some skill, because generally, if you're able to hit an enemy cavalry while you're moving and while they're moving, you're probably going to have a pretty decent, yeah, not that much skill. Okay, not that much skill. I thought I would get much more than that. Okay, going to tell our infantry to charge in now. Nice. Taking that guy out too. Obviously, if you can get a kill, then obviously the experience gain is going to be a lot better. Oh! <laughs> I 
Okay. You didn't see that. All right. You didn't see that. How much do you want? How much do you want for, for you not to have seen that? You know, bribery. Bribery is a thing. And uh, banditry is certainly that. <laughs> oh, dearie me. Okay, yeah. I literally hit one of Svana's caravan guards or whatever it was. <laughs> Okay, oh, 88% of the loot, okay, pretty nice. And uh, yeah, look at this. This is the exact reason why I wanted to uh, go and do one of these caravan uh, caravan ambushes because I knew, you know, that we're gonna get a whole bunch of these guys and they're pretty good. I mean, for bandit units, they're pretty good. They're not the best, obviously, but they are decent. And we have now the ability to, oh dear. We now have the ability to give Bruce a, an absolutely uh, terrible crime against fashion, as you can no doubt tell. And he's going to be cursing my name for many years to come for making him wear that. But uh, we don't care about that, right? I mean, look at him. Look at, th look at, those, look at those muscular legs. Ah, uh, yes, I'm sure you very much want to look at that. Okay, so let's move on. There we go. Yeah, it's fantastic. Okay, so yeah, that, that's super nice and easy. I personally really love that quest, generally because it is so incredibly simple, really, really fast, and you always gain something extra. You gain a massive amount of loot, surprising amount of loot for such a small party that you're fighting. You're also going to be getting the gold for the completion of the quest. You're going to be getting some relation with the NPC in question. And uh, just generally, you're going to be getting prisoners too. So even even then, you know, it's going to be really, really good. Oh, manual laborers. Okay, how much do you... Why are you a child? Why why, why is this person a child? Is that a... That's a bug, isn't it? I think, I, I think I've uh, heard about that. Okay, yes. How, how, how many do you need? You need 12? Okay, sure. Mind your own business, Headman. Okay, yeah, so mind your own business because I'm going to be giving, uh, there we go, brought you a few men. I have 13, so we're just going to give all of them. And there we have it. There we are. Look at that. 11,000. That's actually kind of crazy. And I think that might be a bit imbalanced. But don't tell Tail Worlds that I said that, all right? Don't tell Tail Worlds I said that because they're going to nerf it. They're going to nerf it like the In-N-Out quest, although the In-N-Out quest was exploitable in a pretty egregious manner. But generally, the manual laborer quest is not really exploitable. It's just the, the fact that the reward is, well, it, it's, it's quite extensive. I mean, obviously, it's quite extensive. 11,000 for literal 13 bandit units. Bear in mind that there they, they, they were tier threes there, you know, tier threes and, uh, you know, some some other things. But um, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, G generally, I would say that I'm I, I mean, don't get me wrong. OK, I'm really happy that the reward for that quest is so incredibly generous. But on the other hand, I'm kind of thinking to myself, did I just kind of cheat a little bit? Because it feels to me like I just, I kind of, um, <laughs> I don't know. I just kind of removed the difficulty, basically. I don't know why they get, they gave me so much for that, to be honest. I mean, I thought to myself, yeah, they're going to give me maybe 4,000, you know, somewhere around that. But they, uh, they really gave me a, a huge amount. Anyway, that's probably going to be it for this episode. What we're going to do in the next one is I'm obviously in between episodes going to install the, I, I think it's called Formery. I think it's called Formery or something like that. Um, if I've gotten that incorrect, then obviously you, you know what I'm talking about. The, it's a bandit focus mod. It adds a huge amounts of abilities to ally yourself with bandits. You can recruit bandits. You can do uh, blackmail and extortion and raiding. Well, you obviously can do raiding already, but you can do all kinds of scheming and you can even plot the murders of your opponents. And there's a wide variety of different features available in it. And I'm very much looking forward to experiencing it with you. Anyway, thank you very much for the support on this series so far. And hopefully we're going to continue having a lot of fun with it. I thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.